Good morning. Today I'm going to introduce you to the, my course of Year 11 General Maths. Before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about me and just let you know who I am. Clearly it's more difficult when we're talking online, but we'll go get to know each other pretty soon when we're back in class. So my name is Russell Self. You might notice that I'm not an Australian. I'm originally from Texas, where I taught at a university for 20 years. Then I taught for a couple of years at a private girls' school in New Zealand, in Wellington, and now I am here in Brisbane working with you guys at St. Joseph's. So this course is general mathematics, which is going to take you through some basic ideas and some of the mathematics that you might encounter in your everyday life. Now, after I have said that, I'm going to tell you that most of the mathematics you learn you will not encounter in your everyday life. If you use most of this mathematics in your everyday life, then you're making it happen. So I want to tell you about me. Most students, or many students, are not very happy about mathematics, and I was not happy about mathematics either. I got the lowest possible passing grades in my high school years, and I was happy to get them. But after high school, when I went to university, I decided that there was no reason why I could understand other topics so well and not mathematics. So I started talking to myself a little bit about what's happening there. And you're going to see that that's a key to making yourself a better student, is reflecting on what you think about the topic and how you think you can help yourself improve. And I'm going to try to help you do that. Now, I went to school in a little town in Texas, and I had took two years of high school algebra, and again, did not do very well. But since that time, I've developed a way of thinking about mathematics that's really helped me, and helped many, many students as I've taught through the years. At the university, I was in charge of a program that prepared, underprepared students for university level mathematics. So my specialty is helping those students who might not feel comfortable with mathematics and, and teach them how to make sure that they can succeed. I have had several students who started in the lowest level possible level of mathematics and now have master's degrees in mathematics and have gone on to teaching careers at university. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. So we're going to talk a little bit about the structure of the course and what I'm going to expect of you and what you can expect of me. Remember, it's not a one-way street. You should have high expectations of me just as I have of you. So here's how a typical day is going to start. The first thing is you're going to watch the video at home. I'm going to give you these videos or post these videos on your Spire page for you to watch at home. And while you're watching the video, I want you to take good notes. Now, I'm not assuming, like a film or something like that, that you can just decide which things you need to write down. I will literally tell you exactly what to write down. I'm going to write down on the screen just as you see here, everything that I expect for you to write down on your notes. But I do want you to take your notes in a specific way. Okay? And this is called the split page note taking system. And you're not going to really understand so much about how, why we're doing this at first, but as you start to use your notes to study and as you develop a good system of notes, you're going to see that this makes great sense. So I'm going to go to another page here and just demonstrate what the split page note taking system looks like. And I do insist you do this. Sorry, this is not an option, right? You will take notes from your work and you will use the split page note taking system. I'll check. Sorry guys, but <clears throat> when you something works, it's really worth spreading. Okay, so here's what it's going to look like. 
the first thing you're going to do is you're going to split your page in half. Now, it, this doesn't have to be literally. Some students fold the page in half and use the fold in half. Some people do a little line like I've done. Lots of people just do an imaginary line. And on this side, this is where you're going to take your notes. And every time we get, I give notes, I'm going to go through the same type of, of pattern. We're going to do a little introduction. And, to, and we're going to talk a little bit about the how, what, and why of what we're doing. Okay. We'll also put any terms or definitions here to get you started. And I'll do a little blah, blah, blah about what it is we're working on. Okay, So you're always going to have that bit of introduction there. And then, depending on the process that we're going to be working with, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you steps. I am a big believer in step one, step two, step three, leading you through the process. And this is what I really want you to concentrate on. So step one, step two, step three, etc. Depending on how many steps and how complicated the process is. Now, what's unique about this system is that now once you have all your notes on that side, on this side is where we're going to do examples. And there's going to be a lot of blank paper on this side. Because when I want you to do the examples, I want you to do the examples here, beginning here with the steps. So we would start example one down here. So all of this space would be blank, which is perfectly fine. It just means that what happens is when you come back to study it, here are the steps and here is an example of how those steps are, are written. I know that all of you have seen math books in the past, and one common complaint that students have about math books is that they're very difficult to read. And part of that is that examples and steps and terms and definitions and things are all mixed together on the page. It's not like a history book where it's mostly text, and then if you have a map or a picture or something, it's off to the side. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put all the words, the narrative, if you will, here, and we're going to put all the examples on this side of the page. And by doing that, you really get a sense of why you're doing something, and it makes it a lot easier to read. Because I'm also going to tell you that the number one thing that you can do for success in this course is to concentrate your efforts here. Most of us try to learn mathematics by looking at examples. Now it is important in math that we have that we have examples because mathematics is the kind of course where not only do I have to know what it is I'm doing, I have to actually do it. So you need to learn from the, the examples or use the examples and we'll do those together and work really, um, really strongly in that area. But what I need you to do is I need you to concentrate on this side. Okay, and we'll talk about how I'm going to help you do that next. So just to recap, so your notes are going to be on the left hand side. And again, we'll have a little introduction, then we'll have steps, and then we'll do examples. Now the videos that I'm going to give you are just going to be the notes. I'm not going to include any examples because I want you to see the notes in isolation, the steps in isolation so that you can concentrate on that. This is the part you study, okay? And then we're gonna learn how to use those notes. So what I'm teaching you is actually the notes, not the examples, and that may seem different than, uh, than the way you've approached a math class before. It may not, you may have students who, teachers who have done this for a while, but really important that you get this in your head that the stuff on the left-hand side, the notes, are what you study, not the examples. Okay? So, let's go on to the next page and talk about how we're going to use this. So, you're going to again do, be doing those notes at home. Then, when we get into, into class, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to review the notes. 
So, if you haven't watched the video, then you better get with somebody beforehand to make sure that you get their notes written down. Or, be sitting close to someone who has watched the video and taken the notes. Now, you can get away with that a little bit. My, uh, one of my favorite sayings is, if you don't have an answer, then steal one. Perfectly happy with that for a while, but you can't go through life stealing your answers. You're going to have to get your own answer at some point if you want to succeed. In order to review the notes, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call on individual students. Now, this is completely random. I have an app on my phone that I'll use that will select a student's name and I will call on that individual student. Now, don't panic here. I'll go ahead and panic and get it out of the way. But what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to ask you questions about the notes. So, for example, if say we were solving linear equations. I, my first question would be, okay, Thomas, can you tell me what the note, what the process, we, the, the mathematical thing we learned about last time? And you would say, we learned about linear equations, okay? If you took the notes, every single word that you need to say is going to be written on the paper right in front of you, okay? So don't panic here. I'm not going to just call on you to, to say something that you won't know. But what it does do is it makes you be an active participant of, in the class. You are really having to make sure that you are paying attention and that you know what it is I'm asking and how, and how, to, how each of those pieces comes together. The way I can also check to note, make sure that you have notes and that you are understanding the process. Okay, So I'm going to call on individual students and we'll simply go through the entire page of notes that we took, or that you took, from the video, okay? After we review the notes, then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to do some examples. Now, again, I'm not going to leave you hang in here. I'm not just going to put an example on the board and say, now work it. So the first example we do is I'm going to do it. So I'll do an example using the notes. Now, I'm still going to ask you questions here. I'm going to ask you questions about the process. So the first thing I need to do is this, or how do I know it's an equation, for example, blah, blah, blah. And all of those things will be in your notes. Now, I'll answer those questions for you here because I am literally going to be doing that first part of the process all by myself. Then, we're going to do an example or two together. And again, here I'll be up at, I'll be doing the math. You'll be helping me, but you'll be telling me what to do. And again, this is back to the magic device, the phone telling me who to call on. So I'm going to say, and I'm, Charles, what's the first step? And Charles will tell me what the first step is by simply reading the notes. Okay, so it's still very interactive. And then finally, you're going to be doing examples. Now, in the beginning, you're going to have to be doing all of these things by yourself, but I'll keep the lessons quite simple because you're online only. This only applies to when we come back to, to being in class or we can be online together. When you're working with the you do part, there are two pieces here. What I'm going to do is you're going to get some time to work as an individual, again, with your notes. And then, after a little bit of time, and I literally set a timer, <laughs> then what's going to happen is you're going to work as a group just to check your answer, make sure that you're on the right track. Now, sometimes this will be, so, this will be just as simple as check your neighbor and see that you got the same answer. And if you didn't, find out why, right? Just give yourself an idea. And then I'm going to call on you one by one to walk me through the process and we'll write it down on the on the projector here in the recording so that it will be um, correct from start to finish right so and again don't panic here 
I'm going to call on you, but I'm going to give you, you're going to know, I'm going to know that you have the answer in front of you. I'm not going to say, okay, what's the answer? I'm going to say, okay, so the next step would be, then you'll read a step. Then the next person I would say, okay, if I do those two steps, if I add the first and second numbers, what, what, is my, what, am I, what do I get? And again, you have the support of your group when we're back in class. Of course, when you're on your own, I'll be a little more lenient. But when we're back in class, you'll have the support of your group to help you. So everyone is going to participate in this process. So I'm going to do some examples, we're going to do some examples together, and then you're going to do them as individuals, but you're still going to have the support of your group. Okay. Every stage of this process, though, I'll be calling on you to answer questions. Okay. Now, hopefully, we can get through all of our work that we need to get done by the time we do a few of these individual things, then I'll just set you loose on the homework, uh, on the classwork for the day. If we run out of time, however, and remember the classes are only about 40 minutes long, then you'll have to take that home and finish it up, as well as watch the video before we meet again. I'll try to keep the video short, so there'll be like 10 minutes or so. Um, this one's a little longer because we have more ideas to cover, okay? But always you will be supported. I'm never going to ask you things that... I don't, you don't have right in front of you to, an, to answer. Because I want you to see that mathematics is a process that we can learn, that everyone can learn. So to talk a little bit about that, the next thing I want to talk about is how we learn. Now, lots of ways to learn. Some of us are visual learners, some are auditory, some are kinesthetic. You've heard all those terms before. It really doesn't matter. The best process for learning is to use every possible way put together. Don't concentrate on just one way. I'm an a auditory learner, therefore I need to put everything in song. Not going to happen. So what you can do, though, is you can use every piece of this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hear it. You're going to listen, to watch the videos and hear it. And I'm going to write it down so you're going to see it, right? And I am not going to just give you notes on a OneNote. Sorry, guys. Not going to happen. You're going to participate. You're going to write it. Those three processes hit just about every type of, of learning style. You're going to hear it, see it, and write it. So you're physically going to own the material by having written it. Then, the most important part, which is the part we never seem to get done, is we're going to practice it. And I mean practicing the notes before you even come to class to see the examples. Right? And the best example that I can give for how this works is thinking about walking somewhere you've never been. So we all have those places that we walk to, say from home to school, or that, that we've done so often that we just do it as if it's on, we're on autopilot. But the first time you walk somewhere new, that you're in an unfamiliar situation, an unfamiliar place, then you're not so good at it. So to, to go somewhere new, what we might do is we might get directions from someone. And if it's a very complicated direct, set of directions, we might even write those directions down. Notes, right? Okay, so write those directions down. Right. Once you've written them down, you don't just throw them under the couch and not pay attention. You take them with you, right? You use those notes as you walk through the first time. But after you become more familiar with the process of where you're walking, you don't need to stop and look at every street sign. You just make those turns when you get to them, okay? As you practice, then those things become automatic. 
Now that might not happen for a while. You might have to walk to school for several weeks before it becomes automatic and you don't have to deal, see or think about any street signs and just you're, all, you're there and you look back and think, wait a minute, I don't even remember leaving home and I'm already here. But of course, we're in a situation in a classroom situation, so we don't have time for you to walk through the first one for three weeks until you get it to be automatic. So this is why we have to think about our learning. We have to review what we're doing. We have to really think about the process over and over. So I'm going to challenge you, and it is going to be so boring, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to challenge you to read your notes three times after you've watched the video. Boring. Dull. I know, can't help it, right? Another process that you could use is you could uh, read your notes a few times and then see if you can repeat it back to a parent or a sibling or somebody who's willing to deal with it. <laughs> Maybe it may have to be your parent, okay? Somebody who is, tall, is patient enough to just let you talk it through, right? The first step is this. Second step is this and have them check it. Because if you don't know it well enough to tell it to someone else, you don't know it. So, let me write that down. You don't know something. Underline no. Unless you can tell someone else. how to do it. So if you can't tell your sibling or parent or grandmother or whoever what the steps are for solving a linear equation, then you don't know how to solve a linear equation. You might know some of it and you might be able to squeak through some of it, but that's the reason why things don't go perfectly well when you do a whole process. You don't know it well enough to tell somebody you don't know it, okay? And again, we have a short time in class and in school to be able to learn a great deal of things. And you're going to see that a lot of them are related. And the beauty of mathematics is that you don't have to relearn the math. All you have to do is learn the processes or the, the notes. Because you may not have thought about this, but if you really think about it, there are only four operations in all of mathematics. We can add, we can subtract, we can multiply, which is just adding the same thing over and over and over again. Can't spell, but there it is. And we can divide. And so all you have to know is those four operations. But they can be put together in an infinite variety of ways to be able to do very complicated problems. If you can show me any place where you do anything other than add, subtract, multiply, or divide, then I will just take your test for you and you can go on, okay? Because <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Now, what your job is, though, is to know when you need to add, when you need to subtract, etc. And you don't even have to worry about these as much because for most problems, not all, you'll have a calculator that can help you out with these basic skills. Now, I know a lot of people think that using a calculator is cheating, and I would like you to know your multiplication tables just to make your life easier. But using your calculator to help you with these, with these processes will make your life easier. You use tools all the time. I expect you to use tools in the course to make your life uh, easier and to make the, your work more efficient. Right Now, if you have to do 2 times 3 with a calculator, I'm going to frown a little bit. I'm going to try to help you through that. But for larger numbers, of course, use your calculator. Don't have any problem with that at all. Okay? All right. Now, that's a lot of information, but I wanted to give you some idea of how I work and how you're going to work since you're in my course now and what you can expect. Now, each day what I'm going to do is I'll put up the video, and again, you're going to watch that on your own, and there'll be a video um, for this after this lesson. 
for the time being, for the next two weeks, uh, or next week, well, sorry, I'll tell you later, for the next little bit of time, <laughs> you're going to be just working on your own, but I'm going to still put up the videos. If you don't need the video and you can go straight to the homework, that's fine, do it. Um, I'm not worried at this point, but it might be a good idea to practice taking the notes. I'm going to show the bit when I do the, the notes, I'm going to, to follow that example of the split page notes, note taking system and uh, try to get you ready like that. Now, so that takes care of what I'm going to do and what I expect you to do outside of the classroom and a little bit of it inside the classroom. What I'd next like to do next is just do another little video just introducing you to the materials on Spire. And I know you'll see these in every one of your classes, but mine is a little different because I expect more out of you than uh, some other teachers.